Okay, so get this. Yeah. There's this new study, and it's making some pretty wild claims. Oh, yeah. About a possible connection between quantum mechanics and consciousness. We're talking about a press release on some brand new research. Okay. And, you know, the comment section is already buzzing. Of course. So today we're diving deep into this study to figure out what it's really saying, what the implications could be, and what other folks are thinking about it all. I like it. So what I found really interesting about this study is that it centers around the question of how anesthesia actually works on the brain. Okay. And they're proposing an explanation that delves into the quantum realm. Quantum realm. Hold on. Yeah. Quantum mechanics in our brains. Right. That sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. Well, it might sound far-fetched. Yeah. But let's break down what they found. Okay. They gave rats a drug that specifically targets Uh these tiny structures in the brain called microtubules. Microtubules. And what's interesting is that the rats on this drug took way longer to become unconscious under anesthesia. Mm, compared yeah. to rats who didn't get the drug. So it's like this drug somehow interfered with the anesthesia. But how... That's a good question. Do we even know what these microtubules do? That's the thing. Okay. Microtubules are these tiny tube-like structures inside our neurons. Mm-hmm. And they're essential for keeping the cells shape right. and transporting things around. So important. You could think of them as the scaffolding and the delivery trucks all rolled into one. Okay. But their potential role in consciousness is still a big question mark. So how does this study link these microtubules to anesthesia and even quantum mechanics? Well, the researchers propose that the anesthetic might actually be working by disrupting some kind of Mm -hmm. quantum process happening within these microtubules. Mm -hmm. They're saying there's no known classical explanation for how this drug could have such a significant effect on the anesthetic's action. Okay, now I'm really curious. Yeah. Are they saying that consciousness itself mm. is somehow a quantum phenomenon? Well, Professor Wiest, the lead researcher, argues yeah. that yeah. if their findings hold up, right. it would be a radical shift okay. in our understanding of human nature. Huge. He's suggesting that consciousness yeah. might be fundamentally tied to the quantum world. Wow, that's a huge statement. Yeah. What would the implications of that even be? I mean, besides blowing everyone's minds. The potential implications are pretty mind-boggling. Okay. Imagine understanding how consciousness works in coma patients. Mm -hmm. Or even animals in a whole new way. Right. This could even change how we approach mental illnesses. Yeah. Or brain diseases like Alzheimer's. That's a lot to unpack. It is. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's see what other people are saying. Okay. The comments section is always a good reality check. Right. It's always interesting to see the different reactions. And you're right. Yeah. Some are understandably skeptical. Absolutely. Yeah. Some people are saying, hold on. Mm -hmm. Just because we don't have a classical explanation right now doesn't automatically mean it's quantum mechanics. Right. And that's a fair point. It is a fair point. Yeah. It's like when people used to attribute things they couldn't explain. Oh, yeah. To gods or spirits. Exactly. Just because we have a gap in our knowledge Uh, doesn't mean we should jump to the most exotic explanation. Exactly. Plus, even if these microtubules are involved in how anesthesia works. Yeah. Does that really prove anything about consciousness itself? Well, it's an important piece of the puzzle for sure. Yeah. But as with any new scientific finding. Right. We need to be cautious and consider all the possibilities. Well, some commenters are already bringing up alternative theories of consciousness that don't involve quantum mechanics at all. Like what? Like uh, the theory of neuronal group selection, which focuses on how networks of neurons in the brain Ah. give rise to conscious experience through their interactions and adaptations. Interesting. So we've got this intriguing study suggesting a potential link between quantum mechanics and anesthesia. Right. But it's clearly not the final word on consciousness. No, it's just the beginning of what could be a very exciting and potentially controversial journey of discovery. All right. Now I'm really hooked. Good. Let's dive into some of these quantum consciousness theories. Okay. In more detail and see what they're all about. Let's do it. So you're ready to explore some of these mind-bending quantum consciousness theories? Absolutely. Okay. But first, I need a quick refresher. Yeah. What does it even mean to say that consciousness is a quantum phenomenon? Right. It still sounds a bit like science fiction to me. Well, it's the idea that 
the strange rules of quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. the ones that govern the subatomic world, mm -hmm. might actually be playing a role okay. in how our brains create conscious experience. So we're talking about things like superposition and entanglement, right? It, the yeah. stuff that even physicists struggle to wrap their heads around. I know, it's pretty wild. It is. So superposition yeah. is the idea that a particle can exist in multiple states at once. Multiple states at once. Like imagine a coin spinning in the air before it lands. Okay. That's kind of like superposition. Right. And entanglement is when two particles become linked. Yeah. So that even if they're miles apart, uh -huh. what happens to one instantly affects the other. Okay. It's like two coins spinning in perfect sync no matter how far apart they are. Okay, that's wild. Yeah. But how do those concepts connect to consciousness? Right. How do spinning coins in my brain make me? <laughs> right. Well, me. That's the million dollar question. Yeah. And there are a lot of different theories out there. I bet. One of the most well known is the Orch or R model. Orch or. Developed by physicist Sir Roger Penrose. Okay. And anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff. Didn't they focus on those microtubules we were talking about earlier? They sure did. Okay. The Orcha R model proposes that these microtubules, mm -hmm. those tiny structures inside our neurons, yeah. are actually the stage for these quantum processes. Okay. They suggest that quantum computations are happening within these microtubules. Mm -hmm. And somehow that's what gives rise to conscious experience. So it's like our brains are running on tiny quantum computers. That's a simplified way to think about it. Right. But it captures the essence of their idea. Okay. Now keep in mind that the Orchard R model yeah. is still highly speculative. Right. And it has its share of critics. Of course. But it's certainly an intriguing possibility. And it's sparked a lot of debate in the comments section, too. Oh. Some people are bringing up some pretty big philosophical implications. Okay if this turns out to be true. It's understandable. Yeah. Why this topic captures the imagination. Right. If consciousness isn't simply a product of our physical brains. Yeah. But somehow intertwined with the quantum fabric of reality. Okay. It raises questions about things like free will. Right. And even life after death. Yeah, that definitely goes beyond it does. the usual scope of neuroscience. Yeah. It blurs the lines between science and spirituality All right. in a way that I find fascinating. Yeah, for sure. And even if we set aside those more metaphysical questions, right. there are still some potentially huge implications yeah. for fields like medicine and technology. Huge implications. You mean like treating mental illnesses? Exactly. Or developing new types of computers yeah. based on quantum principles? Exactly. If we could understand yeah. the quantum processes underlying consciousness, right. we might be able to develop therapies yeah. that target those processes directly, Wow. leading to more effective treatments for conditions right. like depression or anxiety. Right. And who knows? Yeah. Maybe we could even build artificial intelligence yeah. that possesses something akin to consciousness. That's both exciting and a little terrifying to think about. I know, right? But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Yeah. All of this hinges on whether there's any actual evidence right. to support these theories. Of course, you're right. As intriguing as these ideas are, yeah. we need scientific data to back them up. Okay. So okay. let's shift our focus All right. to the research that's been done so far yeah. and see what evidence, if any, okay. supports the notion of quantum consciousness. Let's dive into the data and ah. see if we can separate the science from the speculation. So do it. So, all right, let's get down to it. Okay. Is there any real evidence to support this idea of quantum consciousness? Yeah. Or is it all just fascinating speculation? Well, it's important to remember that this is yeah. still a relatively young field of study. Right. And scientists are just beginning to develop the tools and techniques needed yeah. to explore these questions. But there must be some research out there, right? Sure. Where are scientists looking for this evidence? Well, one area of research okay. focuses on quantum phenomena yeah. that might be happening in biological systems, mm -hmm. including the brain. So in the brain. For example, some researchers are trying to detect evidence mm -hmm. of quantum entanglement in brain activity. Wait, entanglement in the brain? Yeah. How would they even measure something like that? It's incredibly challenging. Right. But there have been some interesting studies. Like what? One study published in 2022 okay. claimed to have found signatures of entanglement in brain waves. 
So does that mean they proved yeah. entanglement is happening in our brains? Not quite. Okay. The results were promising, mm. but they need to be replicated. Right. And investigated further. Okay. It's a bit like finding a footprint. Oh, okay. It suggests something was there. Yeah. But we need more evidence R to confirm what exactly made that footprint. I see. Yeah. It's an exciting clue, but not a definitive answer. Exactly. Are there other areas of research that might shed light on this? Absolutely. Some scientists are exploring yeah. the role of quantum tunneling in biological processes. Okay. Remind me what quantum tunneling is again. Yeah. It sounds like something out of Star Trek. Imagine a particle encountering a barrier. Okay. That, according to classical physics, it shouldn't be able to pass through. Okay. But in the quantum world, the particle can sometimes tunnel through that barrier. Wow. As if it took a shortcut through another dimension. So if quantum tunneling is happening in our cells... Right. Could that somehow be contributing to consciousness? It's a possibility. Okay. If quantum tunneling is involved in how enzymes work, mm -hmm. which are essential for all sorts of biological processes, right. it's conceivable that it could also be playing a role in the brain. Okay, so we've got these intriguing hints yeah. from quantum biology. But what about direct evidence for quantum consciousness itself? That's the holy grail, isn't it? Yeah. But measuring consciousness is already incredibly difficult, right. let alone trying to detect subtle quantum effects within it. So how do we even approach a question like that? Well, yeah. some researchers are exploring the use of brain-computer interfaces okay. to see if they can detect quantum signatures in brain activity yeah. when people are having certain types of conscious experiences. So basically trying to eavesdrop yeah. on the quantum chatter in the brain. You could say that. Okay. It's a long shot. Right. But if it works, it could be revolutionary. Well, it sounds like we're still a long way from definitive answers. I think so. Where does that leave us right. in terms of understanding this connection between right. quantum mechanics and consciousness? Well, I think we're still in the early stages of exploration. Okay. We have fascinating theories, right. some in intriguing clues, Yeah. but no smoking gun. Yeah. The mystery remains unsolved. So what's the next step? Where do we go from here? More research, okay. more experiments, mm -hmm. more creative ways of thinking about these questions. Right. And most importantly, yeah. we need to keep an open mind. It's a good reminder that science is a process of discovery. It is. Not just about finding answers, mm. but also about asking the right questions. I agree. And this question of how our physical brains yes. give rise to the subjective experience of consciousness right. is one of the biggest and most profound questions we can ask. It is a big one. Well, on that note, I think we've reached the end okay. of our deep dive into quantum consciousness. It's been fun. It's been quite a journey. It has. We've covered a lot of ground. We have. From the basics of quantum mechanics oh, yeah. to the latest research on the brain. Absolutely. But this is just the beginning of the conversation. It is. Exactly. We encourage you to continue exploring this topic on your own. Read the research. Consider the different viewpoints. Mm and form your own conclusions. Definitely. And who knows, maybe someday you'll be the one right. to unlock the secrets of quantum consciousness. That would be amazing.